This program is brought to you by Ignite TV. Now you're in command. Visit rogers.com for more details. Program Connecting Home, Community, and Healthcare. My name is Carol Merton, and I am delighted today to welcome a guest, Marguerite Overly Thomas, who is here to provide us with information about Fall Prevention Month, the Loop, and Community of Practice. Marguerite and I have not seen each other for a few years, and I am just delighted that she's on the program to discuss all of these issues. Um, she's got lots of information to share, so thank you, Marguerite, for joining me today. I, uh, I know you've provided a PowerPoint to our producer, and for those in our viewing audience, they're going to see those, those um, slides. You and I don't, so I'm going to let you wing it and just take us through that PowerPoint with cues to the producer, and we'll chat as we go through and towards the end. So again, thank you for being on the program. Where where would you like to start? Well, I would like to start with thanking you for having me. I'm, I'm delighted, absolutely delighted to do this. And uh, as you said, we are going to be talking about the fall prevention community of practice. I started working in uh, injury prevention in 1996, and I just never stopped. I know some people retire, but my family says I just don't know what that word means. So I'll be talking about the Community of Practice and Fall Prevention Month, which is a huge part of, of our work. And uh, just as a, a quickie, some people might recognize the name or they might look at me and say, I knew that gal when she was younger. And in point of fact, they would be correct because I lived in Owen Sound for 18 years. I'm a graduate of uh, Georgian College, the class of, nursing class of 77, and I worked at Grey Bruce Health Services uh, for a number of years, and I graduated from Humber and Ryerson while doing that, and then went to public health, and I had the wonderful privilege of being one of the first AIDS educators in the province. They had uh, selected someone from each health unit area, and that was a fabulous experience that helped me a lot going forward. Uh, I then defected to Huron County because I got remarried, but we were part of the Wapertoon E. coli, which I know uh, people in the area still remember that. And that, that was both a lived experience uh, because my, my, my husband was very ill and uh, then I came back to help set up the infrastructure. I came back they said six to eight weeks, and I ended up staying eight years because I was still doing injury prevention. And before I left that, I, I was hired as a consultant liaison for the fall prevention community of practice. So that is a bit of background. And I'd like to acknowledge Parachute, which is the national injury prevention charity that I work under now. We are a national organization and we have members from all of the provinces and from the territories. And often the first question when I talk about the community of practice is like, what, what is a community of practice? What does that mean? And it, it's simply a group of people who share a concern, a set of problems, uh, they have a passion about a topic and they want to deepen their knowledge and expertise in this area by interacting with each other on an ongoing basis. Now, um, is, is that perfectly understandable, Carol? It is. Uh, I, and it, what it, people, it's like a learning group and a sharing group together, correct? Very much. It, it's it's all of those things. We we look at the knowledge that's already out there, and uh, we do a lot of sharing of that uh, uh, amongst ourselves. And we're always always looking for new members. Of course, we're also looking for new knowledge. And one of the things I am really really keen on uh, is promoting more about oral health is health, because. Um, 
intuitively, if you do not have good dentition, good oral health, how are you going to have good nutrition? And without good nutrition, uh, older adults grow frail, they fall, they fracture, uh, and it's it's not a good thing. Uh, fall prevention, the big mantra is that when someone falls, bad things happen because the, the outcomes are often not pretty at all. And that's what we work so hard to prevent. So we this is new, and it's not as strong in the evidence, but it's something that we're working on promoting. A lot of things are very strong in the evidence. And so we share that knowledge, uh, evidence-based and promising practices as well. Uh, people who have done innovation will post it on our loop, which is the communication platform, share it with others. Uh, you develop relationships with people. There's a joke that I know everybody in fall prevention, and I don't, but I do know a lot. And often when someone says, you know, I'm interested in stair safety, and right off the bat, I say, Nancy Edwards and Jake Pauls, you know, we've done a lot of this work already. And uh, looking at things like railings, when you have uh, a, a railing poorly designed, uh, a, 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 a older woman with a small hand, if she starts to slip and can't grasp that railing, that railing is useless. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so that's something else that we work on promoting in the building codes. Stair safety is a big one. Bathroom safety is, is huge. So we look at inconsistent practices, what we can do, practical uh, how-to knowledge, based on experiences with similar people. A lot of people, um, they s sort of invent the wheel in their own territory. And what we help them to do a lot is looking at wheels that have already been invented. And you may want to adapt it. Like one of the things that we did, uh, emergency services, uh, a lot of them do lift assist. Somebody falls in the home and they call EMS to, to, to pick them up. And one of the things we created here and here in that we share is a list for volunteers. If you're a volunteer for Meals on Wheels or an organization and you came into a home and saw that someone had fallen, this is a checklist of all of the things that would be the right thing to do under the circumstances. Yeah. So yeah. there's a lot of that kind of sharing that goes on. And how we're able to do that a lot is through Loop. And uh, I, Mark probably has that slide up. We can't see it. But Loop is the uh, communication platform that we use for the community of practice. And it has, uh, it has so many features. We started the community of practice in 2010. So it's 12 years old, but we were only able to get the funding for the communication platform in 2015. And we actually have uh, about 1,700 members all across Canada. So that, that's pretty impressive. And a lot of those members, uh, they are very active on it. They participate in a lot of the features. So right off the top, there's tutorial videos to show you how to use all of the great features on it. And it's, it's totally no cost. It's free and you're able to unsubscribe anytime that you want. You do your settings for privacy, uh, what you want to be notified about. You can get messages uh, and send messages uh, with other members. You also can do a member search. Like let's say uh, you're, you're, you're in, in rural Saskatchewan and you want to find other people in Saskatchewan. You can do a search looking for that. Or let's say you're really keen on hip protectors and you want to meet up with other people who want to know about hip protectors or have knowledge that you'd be interested in. That's a, a great feature too with other members. We also have private groups and we're looking at setting this up in the Grey Bruce area. Uh, it's people in a geographic area who want to share the things that, that they have with other people in that. I say that geographic area, but it can also be an area of interest. Mm -hmm. And again, these are no charge, but then it's a closed group. So only the people uh, who subscribe to that would, would be um, able to access it. 
We have an event calendar because we do a lot of webinars and they're very, very well received on, on a wide variety of topics. Um, there is a discussion board, as I mentioned, that people post a question or they post something is happening and then other people can chime in. I have to give uh, kudos to our Knowledge Center as well. We have a knowledge broker who, uh, if you have a question about something and you are not part of a university or a hospital where you would have access to all the research, mm -hmm. you can put in a request to her and she will come back to you with everything that can be found. We have certainly discovered that sometimes uh, it doesn't exist we can't find it because it's just not there but mm -hmm. uh, by and large we we are able to access a real wide variety of databases to get the information that's needed and we also do some knowledge products like we've done fear of falling because that looms huge uh, we we have a, a consultant who often does it at the scholarly level and then I will take that and write it at a clear language level uh, that's understandable. Uh, we also did uh, during COVID, uh, the things that happened during COVID for older adults for increasing risk of falls. And um, I know people are tired of hearing about that now, but uh, it, it certainly was a factor because people weren't getting out, they weren't getting the exercise. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe not everybody was able to get the groceries for the best nutrition. So those are knowledge products that uh, we have created. Um, the webinars, we have all archived webinars. Uh, when we do a presentation, as I said, they're very well received. And so we record them and we make the slide deck and the recording available to the participant. And we also uh, have it on the website so that people can access it. And some of the things that we've done, uh, we've done series on screening and assessment, uh, safe client handling for staff, balance exercises that are available virtually. This is often quite an interest. Uh, dancing to improve balance. Uh, accessibility always looms huge. Uh, Falls in Midlife uh, was a project that the previous organization funded because it's like everything else. Uh, you, you, you want to catch people before they are at high risk. So mm -hmm. looking at midlife falls, midlife falls are way more common than we give credit to. And um, a lot of that is guys on ladders. Um, yeah, so that's part of it. All of our resources are, are evidence-based and uh, we, we have so many of them. Um, we're so happy to share them. And I would like to move on now to um, the next slide. Which slide are we at, Mark? I think we're at slide number nine. I'm sure he'll put up what whichever one you wish, Marguerite. Okay. Loop, loop two, okay. Okay, so loop, the picture. second loop one. Okay, that's what I was hoping. Uh, we <laughs> have Loop Junior because um, we we have taken on uh, falls in young children and actually carried that even a bit further. And the very most recent webinar was just yesterday, and it was a town hall. Uh, a cross Canada town hall on childhood in injuries. So it's it's about that as well as being about older adults as well. So I wanted to talk about uh, some of the partnerships that I'm working with right now, and then we can go back and discuss um, anything else we want. Uh, I'm working with Osteoporosis Canada, and I have been uh, for a very, very long time. The Ontario Strategy representative is Judy Porteous, and I, I also work a great deal with the Grey Bruce uh, Health Unit with Alyssa uh, uh, Schufeld. And the Grey Bruce Fall Prevention Intervention Program has been part of uh, 
I've been part of that for a very long time. And of course, that involves a lot of community partners. Fall Prevention Month is, is a big thing that we work on because we promote that in November. And this is the eighth year, actually, that we've been doing that. And what we're planning here in Gray Bruce, um, we're going to do two different launches. A lot of this is early days planning because it's June. Uh, library displays, we've been very grateful to the library that they will not only uh, put up our resources, but also uh, a lot of authors' library books they'll display as well. A few years ago, we did a trivia card promotion and we had, we had a lot of these in restaurants. And of course, with COVID, everything literally came off the tables in many ways. But we're looking at, we're going to have that on the Fall Prevention Month website. Mm -hmm. And that will be virtual. And we will be uh, promoting the website, which is uh, fallpreventionmonth.ca. And that's very easily um, accessible. Fall Prevention Month, um, I, I, I've talked about the community of practice in Loop as being for the healthcare workers, the people who work with older adults <laughs> self. But Fall Prevention Month has a great deal of information and resources for older adults themselves. And I sometimes talk like I'm not one of them, but I actually am. So it's very much a, a, a lived experience. And we have promotional material. If you belong to any group, like a, you know, a, a, a church group or a, a seniors group, uh, just a social group, and you, you want to look at what you might have for a poster or information, all that kind of pr professional material or promotional material is there as a template that you can just add your own information. <clears throat> and that's for healthcare workers too, it's just all there. Uh, there's a section on articles and tips. If you have uh, a newsletter or a magazine and you wanna know things that have already been written, uh, there's uh, a fact bank that gives a lot of information about falls. There's a, a presentation that's good to go. All you have to do is download it. Uh, a lot about social media and, and tip sheets just for information. Uh, for the older adults, we have the exercise and videos. There's resources for caregivers. Uh, general information on fall prevention and health. And that's things like uh, nutrition, home safety, medications, vision, footwear. And I do want to say a couple things about footwear. Uh, I, I've worked with uh, the uh, UHN, the University Hospital Network in Toronto, has a lab, a winter lab, and they've done a, a lot of work on uh, the treads on your boots for safety. And that website is called Rate My Treads. And uh, we are hoping, we, we have the, Tilak Dutta is a colleague who would be willing to speak on the radio and talk about the research that they've done. Um, I will ask you, Carol, who do you think has the worst footwear in uh, winter time, men or women? <laughs> now, who knew I'd be part of this quiz? Well, you know what? I'm a healthcare provider, as you know. And I've seen some pretty wicked footwear on both. So, you know, I'm not sure. But sometimes men are hard to convince to change something they're comfortable with. And women favor things because it looks good. So, you know, I'm going to leave it. I know what I think, but I don't want somebody to think that I'm the expert. So I'm going to turn it back to you, Margarita, as the expert. Tell me what the studies say. Fair enough, fair enough. Okay. Uh, <laughs> actually, they're, they're, they're poor. They, they have a winter lab where they test things. And it's not so much the thickness of the tread. It's the material that it's made of. Yeah. Uh, women's boots fare really, really poorly. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
in men's boots, a lot of them fared poorly, but what happened over the years since they started doing this is, uh, is a number of companies have stepped up and said, we want to be the West best. We want to use your information and improve. But yeah. for women's boots, no, uh, the fashion boots are, uh, you know, yeah. Don't be yeah. surprised to find yourself on the ice and snow wearing wearing the the lovely fashion boots for the. <laughs> yeah. But there's a. There's That's a, all ages, right, Marguerite? All ages with the fashion boots are, you know, it uh, it makes you shudder sometimes. Even you know, with with younger adults and young women. Thank yeah. you. And I was just asked yesterday, because my colleague Judy Porteous is doing a presentation today, and she asked me, what would you give as your main messages around fall prevention? And I said, well, because safe winter walking, I, I will say I'll do a couple things here. Safe winter walking is one that we put together uh, in the... Uh, Southwest Network Group, and we work very hard on this. The information is still very pertinent. It uh, It's a couple of years old now, but the, the kind of information that's in here for winter, a lot of it would apply to summer as well. Yeah. And for this one here, this is a staying independent checklist. These are available at the health unit, and it asks the question, and then if you answer yes, the, it indicates a risk factor. And then there's tips on what you can do about it. Because so much of the work, it's teamwork. It's, it's, it's the doctor, the nurse, the PT, the OT, the PSW, uh, the, all the various consultants, uh, your vision experts, your hearing experts, uh, all of those things that are uh, a risk factor. and. Um, home safety looms huge uh you know to take the, the risk out of yeah. most falls happen in your own home mm -hmm. and uh to, to lower those risk factors is really important but what i wanted to say about preventing falls now in the summer first of all if you have flip-flops there's a really good spot for them and it's called the bin <laughs> as in garbage bin the garbage bin. <laughs> Be very conscious of you. You need you need good shoes in the summer, even though, you know, I'm just going from here to there. Uh, to be aware of footwear. Now in the summer, we're going to the beach. We're going to parties. We're getting together, and you're carrying some something in your arms, and you're maybe not looking down to see at your feet where there's a curb. You're in unfamiliar territory. And it's really easy for people to slip and fall hanging on to something. Yeah. And yeah. to not, it, it's in the safe winter walking pamphlet too, but just to be very aware of where you are and what hazards there might be in the environment. And the yeah. big one, all of us, all of us live life in a hurry. We got to get here, we got to go there and to slow down and concentrate on what you're doing because it's just it's just so important yeah marguerite you raised some really important points and you know when you're talking about rate your treads like that that is a study and they have rated the treads but i think of it like i would think of tires on a car if you want snow tires you want a good tread to keep you safe as you're driving your footwear is the same you don't want something that doesn't have good tread when you're doing winter driving or walking. And it's like your tread is important. And the other is the fashion statements around blinging up the, putting extra bling on the flip flops does not make them safer. <laughs> no, 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 it does not. It does not. So we, we have a lot of information for healthcare workers and I am always only an email away. If you go on the website, uh, you, you can Google any 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 member. I'm right there. I'm only a message or a phone call away. I don't work full time, but I do work all the time. And so, <laughs> so people yeah. can reach me. Um, so healthcare yeah. workers and a anybody in Gray Bruce, you know, who's interested in being part of the fall prevention intervention program, 
uh, it, it's a really good working group. We, we make things happen in uh, a, a lot of expertise and, and, and just, uh, just really good work happens there. Mm -hmm. Uh, for older adults, that Fall Prevention Month website, there's so much information. And um, I, I know um, the, the, there's so many things to consider. Like I could talk to you for hours about all of the many aspects. Are there any closing remarks you'd like from me? Well, um, I, I'm so impressed with the information, uh, really. and. Being being someone who receives the loop information, I know what quality there is as well. You mentioned earlier in the program something about changing building code, like you have input into changing things like building code regulations. That, and so you're you're talking, obviously keeping individuals safe, but you're also and educating professionals. But you're talking about making systems change yes. that help oh, yes. to keep people safe. And that, I think, is a remarkable thing, that it, you're not just dealing with the event or at the individual level. You're trying to make a change at the larger level to keep people safe. Um, and that that certainly is important, to, I thought, to point out as well. Um, any comments on, on how you feel about is it hard to change systems? It's very difficult. It's very long. And uh, the, the, the uh, building codes, there'll be a call for comments. Yeah. And you are able to do that. You have to, you have, to have a group that's well organized and strong in, yeah. in what they're doing. But yeah. uh, so it's, it's a slow process, but eventually some, some good things can happen. Yeah. And thank you so much for this opportunity. Oh, it's my pleasure. I, I also want to state, you know, the point needs to be made. Falls happen at many ages. It is not always the elderly. But falls have an impact on people's lives, their oh, quality yes. of life, and how long they live. And I think that's, that's critical as well. Falls impact a lot of people and a lot of families. And every time someone falls, there is a family behind that that is also affected. Healthcare workers, the whole healthcare system. Yeah. Better we can keep people with good, strong bones, no osteoporosis, and no keep the risk factors down. The, the better life can be for people. Absolutely. Well, I have appreciated you being here. I wish you every success. I certainly will be paying attention to all the information that's coming forward. And please keep in touch because it would be great to have you back on the program, Marguerite. It, it, it's just excellent information. Oh, any, any time, any time. Thank you. I have Thank a you. lot of passion and enthusiasm. <laughs> excellent. Thank you to our viewing audience as well for joining us today to learn more about programs, resources, and services available to you and to your family. Take care and stay safe. Thank you. Thank you, Carol. the Rogers TV viewer response line. Email us or connect with us on social media. Are you the type who would keep going or stop? It's not easy to stop when you have an addiction. Legalizing cannabis won't stop addiction. It trivializes its consumption. Let's be vigilant. If you need help, visit portage.ca. As the fighting continues in Ukraine, thousands of people are fleeing for their lives, forced to leave everything behind. You can help them. Your donation.